Today on Sports Central, I'll be giving you guys my Pac-12 quarterback rankings for the upcoming college football season. And as we get closer and closer to this upcoming college football season, we're going to continue to look in depth in each of the positions for each of the conferences. And today I'll be giving you guys my quarterback rankings for the Pac-12 conference. A uh, very interesting um, rankings here today out of the Pac-12. I mean, this is a conference that has got several really good quarterbacks, but also a lot of very interesting situations. I mean, you got several uh, big quarterback battles still going on across the conference. And uh, today I'll be ranking each of the projected uh, starting quarterbacks. So by no means are each of these quarterbacks confirmed uh, to start next season, but these are the projected starters uh, for next year. I want to go ahead and get started with number 12, which is going to be Tanner McGee out of Stanford. And this is a tough one here at number 12. I mean, there are several players uh, that could be number 12, but it just happened to be uh, Tanner McKee at number 12. He just does not have much experience with Stanford. And really, I mean, last season when he did play for this team was not very promising. I mean, with his 42% completion rate, that is kind of obvious. But it's hard to predict a lot of the players at the bottom of these lists because, I mean, they don't have any experience. We, we haven't hardly seen them play in college. So, I mean, a lot of these players at the bottom of the list could easily be wild cards where we could see them uh, surprise a lot of people. But I think Tanner McGee does um, end up being the 12th or the worst quarterback in the conference next season. He did have an opportunity to uh, be behind Jack West last season, which was definitely beneficial for him. It gives him some experience with Stanford. But overall, I think McKee next season is kind of in a bad situation because, I mean, Stanford next year, I mean, they're losing quite a bit of talent from 2020 to 2021. So that is definitely something to watch out for. But he does have potential. I really do think it's just a matter of whether or not he can uh, perform and improve a ton over the course of this offseason. Number 11 is going to be Jordan McLeod out of Arizona. This is one of those quarterback battles which could be easily um, any one of those three quarterbacks at the bottom there between uh, Gunnar Cruz and then Will Plummer. Um, but I think right now, from what I'm seeing, it's going to be Jordan McLeod. He's a transfer in from South Florida. Um, this is a big um, situation for him. And I definitely think Jordan McLeod is probably my favorite at least uh, to get the starting position just because, I mean, Jordan McLeod in general definitely has got the most experience in college football, not really with Arizona, but he's got the most experience in college football, but also the most talent, I'd say, in this quarterback um, situation for next season. Gunnar Cruz would probably be the second most likely candidate just because um, I actually kind of like him quite a bit. I like his play style, and I think he definitely has got potential to lead a, to lead a team at some point. But Jordan McLeod is just my favorite just because of the amount that he actually improved, especially in his accuracy from 2019 to 2020. Um, played very well in 2020 actually. I mean he had 1300 yards, 9 touchdowns, 2 interceptions, uh, not a bad touchdown interception ratio. Also had a good completion percentage with 62%. That is 7% above uh, what he had in 2019. So he's definitely improving and I think honestly I mean Jordan McLeod could easily be like a number 8 or number 7 quarterback in the conference but right now I'm going to keep him at number 11. I'm going to be pretty conservative with him but I mean, he's got definitely a huge uh, amount of potential going into next season. I would really want to watch out for this player. Uh, but if Garner Cruz does win the job, I mean, there's a chance we do see um, Arizona. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I just feel like most poten potential here is in Jordan McLeod. But once again, it's a very tight quarterback situation. We could easily see it uh, within three different quarterbacks. So, But number 10 is going to be Brandon Lewis out of Colorado. And this is a tough one here just because, I mean, if you look at the situation in Colorado, um, Sam Neuer actually just transferred out. Um, he is in there, he's in the transfer portal now. And of course, he didn't play much this spring uh, because of an injury from what I'm seeing here. Uh, so Sam Neuer, it was more than likely he wouldn't really play much in 2021. Uh, but this Colorado quarterback situation is just tough. I mean, if you look at uh, Colorado from last season, they were actually a good team. Like this was a good football team in 2020. Um, but the problem is here is that this quarterback situation does not have an experienced quarterback at all. Uh, Brandon Lewis wasn't even hardly with this team last season, didn't even uh, play a snap for this team. Uh, and of course, you got JT Shrout, who's also in this situation. Uh, we can see both quarterbacks definitely uh, take snaps next season for sure. But Brandon Lewis, it looks like um, he's going to be the primary quarterback for now, at least starting in the first uh, in the first week. He did have the strongest spring from what I'm seeing here. Um, he's playing pretty well from what I'm seeing as well. So who knows? Brandon Lewis could lead this team to a good season. But, I mean, it's just, I feel like if Sam Norrick could be with this team another season, I mean, Colorado could actually be a top team in the Pac-12 next year uh, just because of the amount of potential they're returning from 2020. But Brandon Lewis, it looks like he's going to be the quarterback for now. But once again, it could easily uh, be up in the air. Number 11 is going to be Jaden Delora out of Washington State. And this is a quarterback situation that's also very interesting because he got... Uh, Jerick Garantano from Tennessee, he's transferring in. 
Um, so Washington State's got a couple of good quarterbacks here. Uh, I definitely think there's a gap though between nine and ten. Um, I feel like I feel like ten and below is kind of in their own level, but. Uh, number nine here with Jaden Delora. I definitely think he's got potential. Same thing with Jarrett Garantano. I mean, he played pretty well in the SEC. He's coming from an SEC situation to a Pac-12 situation. So, I mean, I definitely think Jarrett Garantano's got a great chance to start at quarterback for this team. But I definitely think uh, Delora is probably going to be your um, your starting quarterback at least for week one, just because he's got experience with the team. I uh, played pretty well in 2020. I mean, not excellent, but he definitely um, he actually uh, has some good experience with this team. 880 yards. Uh, five touchdowns, four interceptions in 2020. Uh, but once again, uh, Jared Garantano has definitely uh, got potential, but I definitely think uh, we're going to have to see what happens here because it could easily go either way. Number eight is going to be Tristan Gibbia out of Oregon State. Um, of course, he's he's got two years of experience now with Oregon State. He was the primary starter for this team um, in 2020. Put up 820 yards, three touchdowns, three interceptions, uh, 60, or yeah, 62% completion rate as well. So he did not play that bad in 2020. He improved a decent amount. Uh, I'd say from 2019 to 2020. Um, he definitely has got more experience with this team, and that's going to be a big um, help for him. Uh, but yeah, we're going to have to see what happens here. Tristan Gebbia is definitely a quarterback that is definitely hard to predict for next season. I mean, he could easily be as high as number five or four on this list, but at the same time, I could also see him being number 11 or 12. So yeah, I'd definitely be on the lookout for Tristan Gebbia because he's definitely one of the biggest wild card quarterbacks of the Pac 12. Number seven is going to be Dylan Morris out of Washington. Last season, he played pretty well uh, for the Huskies, and he's actually the first quarterback in our B, in our B tier. Um, in 2020, he put up 900 yards, four touchdowns, three interceptions, also a 61% completion rate. Did not have a bad season at all for Washington. I definitely think uh, he brings a big amount of potential to this team for sure. Um, I like Washington and Dylan Morris quite a bit next season. I think that team definitely uh, should be one of the top teams in the Pac-12 North at least. And I could see this team in the Pac-12 championship game next season, especially... Uh, with a decent quarterback in Dylan Morris. Um, he definitely has got some big um, big potential for sure. I like his upside quite a bit. Um, I mean, once again, I mean, you can't, you can't uh, have that low of a completion rate if you're going to be an outstanding quarterback. But Dylan Morris, once again, definitely has got a huge amount of potential. Number six is going to be Chase Garbers out of California. He's got, he's got quite a bit of experience with this team um, and, and in the Pac-12 as well. But if you look at him over the course of his career, um, played pretty well, especially in 2019. Like, if you look at him in 2019, he put up 1,700 yards, uh, 14 touchdowns, 3 interceptions, and a 61% completion rate. 2020 wasn't quite as good of a year if you're looking at it yardage-wise. Uh, 770 yards, 6 touchdowns as well. Uh, but I definitely think he's got, I mean, Chase Garbers especially, I feel like is a, is a player that definitely could lead a team to a good season. And I think California is definitely bound for a good season in 2021. I like California quite a bit, and I feel like this team... Uh, it's just a matter of time until we see California have um, a huge breakout season. And I feel like in 2021, uh, that could be the case for sure, which is Garbers under center. Number five is going to be Anthony Brown out of Oregon. And this was a tough one here to place. Uh, just because, I mean, Anthony Brown, I mean, he's he doesn't have much experience with Oregon. He's got a ton of experience in college football. He just does not have much with Oregon. Uh, and, of course, we saw Tyler Shuck as well. He was the primary starter uh, for Oregon last season. And Anthony Brown was not able to beat uh, Tyler Shuck out last last season. So, I mean, for what we're seeing there, I mean, with Tyler Shuck uh, beating out um, Anthony Brown last season, it seems like Anthony Brown isn't quite as good of a quarterback as Tyler Shuck. And Tyler Shuck wasn't even all that great last season. So, Anthony Brown definitely has got to really improve over the course of this offseason if he's going to lead this team to a great year. Um, I definitely think he's got potential. I mean, if you look at him in 2018, uh, especially put up some great stats. 2019, he put up a good completion rate. In um, 2020, he didn't play very much, but he's definitely going to have a really good completion rate. He's got to be more accurate if he's going to be a, a quarterback to lead a team to a Pac-12 championship game next season. But Anthony Brown definitely has got a ton of potential. Number four is going to be Charlie Brewer in the first quarterback in our A tier. And Charlie Brewer next season, I mean, this was a crazy transfer here when I first found out about it. I mean, Baylor to Utah, uh, pretty crazy. But this is a great um, great thing for Utah for sure. I think Charlie Brewer's definitely got a huge amount of potential. I mean, he's definitely a very underrated quarterback too, I will say. I mean, he's, uh, I mean, especially in 2019 when Baylor had that outstanding season, he put up 3,100 yards, uh, 21 touchdowns, 7 interceptions, 65% completion rate as well. So he played very well for Baylor back in 2019. 2020 wasn't quite as good of a year for him, but he didn't have much talent around him at all in 2020, so that was primarily his issue. But in 2021, I mean, Utah is definitely a very talented team next season. I like this team quite a bit. I think Charlie Brewer um, being at our center for this team is going to help him a ton. Um, and I think, I mean, really, I mean, for Charlie Brewer in general, uh, he's definitely a quarterback to watch out for 
Um, I could see this player definitely breaking out next season. Number three is going to be Dorian Thompson Robinson, DTR out of UCLA. Uh, this is a quarterback that I definitely think a lot of people are sleeping on. I mean, when you talk about Pac-12 quarterbacks, most people don't really talk about uh, DTR very much, but he's definitely in the background here, and I could see him definitely being a big dark horse to be the best quarterback in the conference. Um, in 2020, he's the most accurate that he's ever been, 65% uh, completion rate, 1,100 yards. Um, in 2019, also played pretty well with 2,700 yards. Uh, but this is a player that I definitely think continues to improve, and he's, I mean, he's still getting better, which is a huge um, positive for him and for his team in general. Uh, I'd definitely be on the lookout for this player next season. He's going to land at number three. Number two is going to be Jaden Daniels out of Arizona State, possibly one of the most underrated uh, players in all of college football, in my opinion. I mean, in 2019, he had so much. I mean, you could just see the amount of uh, potential that he had. 2,900 yards in 2019, 17 touchdowns, two interceptions, 61% uh, completion rate as well. And, I mean, if you look at his 2020 stats, it doesn't look like he was that good. Uh, but, I mean, Arizona State only played a couple of games last season. I mean, they, they, even, they didn't even hardly have a 2020 season. So, Jaden Daniels, I definitely think going into 2021, if he can improve, um, he is definitely a player to watch out for. I like I like Jaden Daniels quite a bit, and I like Arizona State as well, too. Um, this is a team that I definitely think has got um, definitely the ability uh, to be a top 15 team next season. I think Jaden Daniels could be the quarterback to lead them there. Lastly, number one is going to be Keaton Slovis out of USC. And this is a player that I definitely think, I mean, if any quarterback's going to win the Heisman next season, it's going to be Keaton Slovis. I mean, he's put up outstanding stats over the past the last couple of seasons. Um, of course, he, in 2019 especially, had a 72% completion rate, uh, which is outstanding for a first season, um, and 3,500 yards as well. 2020 wasn't quite as good of a year, but it still was a good season. I mean, there's no doubt about it. So he's still improving. He's got a huge amount of upside, and I think USC in general is definitely a team to watch out for for next season. Uh, I like USC to win the conference right now. They're probably my favorite, I'd say, to win the conference. But that being said, that wraps up my Pac-12 quarterback rankings for next season. Let me know your thoughts and comments below on this list. Uh, if you disagree with anything here, I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. I appreciate you guys all watching, though. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. I'll see you guys later.